Welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show. We're talking business and bourbon. I'm your host, Nick Niehaus, and today I'm excited to talk to Mark Bernstein, who's the CEO and founder of Balto, where we talk about sales, AI, all kinds of great stuff. So Mark, thanks so much for joining me. Nick, thank you, appreciate yeah, it. Of course, happy to have you. So uh, let's talk about Balto, right? So right. it's obviously a really cool AI sales, like all kinds of interesting stuff. You guys are growing like crazy. Um, and for those of you who can't see this on screen, his entire company walked in like three minutes ago and they're all right over there. So yeah, it's, uh, we're, uh, we're a little bit ner more nervous fun. than normal, you know? <laughs> so yeah, tell me about Balto, what do you guys do? Yeah, so Balto is an AI that analyzes sales conversations as they are actually happening. Wow. Analyzes everything that the sales rep is saying as the sales rep is talking, everything that the customer is saying as the customer is talking, okay. and in the moments that the sales rep needs help or guidance, will put up on their computer screen uh, recommendations for how they can do a better job. Really? So the whole idea is that you are buying Balto to help increase your sales. And you're doing that because the moments that sales reps need help, they don't always get it, and Balto gives it to them. Yeah, and I, I've done a lot of sales myself, so I feel like I could use this right now, right off the bat, right? So tell me a little bit about kind of how you came up with the idea, because this is obviously something that I can see being useful in pretty much any industry in the world. So where did, where did the idea originate? And the idea came from, I was working at a tech startup here in St. Louis called Top Ops. Okay. And a lot of awesome talent has come out of Top Ops. Oh yeah. That's actually where I met uh, one of the other two founders, Chris Contes. Cool. And he and I were both in sales there and uh, he was leading the sales development team and I was an account executive. And I would go into the CEO's office who was responsible for sales coaching mm -hmm. and he would rapid fire really good advice for like 20 straight minutes. Sure. And I would leave his office and he had this like sliding glass door and I'd like, close the door and be like, man, that was really, really helpful. And then I'd get on the next call and apply none of what I just right. learned. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you said you've been in sales before. Oh, yeah. So everyone who's been in sales has had that moment where you're on a phone call and you put the phone down and you say, shoot, I totally blew that. Yeah, of course. I know what I'm supposed to do. I just got coached on asking good questions on when they ask for the price, not just giving it out right away, but instead um, like getting to the heart of what sort of pricing would work for them. Uh, I just got coached on doing an authoritative or assumptive close to you know help get the deal done versus you know waffling, mm -hmm. and I didn't do it. So after having that experience a lot and feeling that pain, um, I actually created at the time an Excel macro. Okay. And in the macro, I could type in different topics that I wanted to bring up on the call, and it would pop up information for me on those topics. Hmm. And one of the other founders, Chris, saw me doing this, and he, he walks over behind the desk and said, Mark, I gotta be honest, that's a, that's a really bad idea. And I said, why is that? And he said, you're spending all of your time and energy focusing on typing into this freaking macro sure. rather than listening to what the customer is saying. Hmm. So good point. Uh, that's where we linked up with the third founder, Davidson Gerard, who's actually a childhood friend of mine, known him since uh, six years old, six years old, so had him behind the pole huh? over there. Hiding, huh? <laughs> um, and Davidson says, uh, dude, uh, I have not been out to St. Louis yet. We haven't hung out. I should probably come there. I'll take a train. It'll take two days, but it'll be worth it. Wow. And um, he comes out to St. Louis and I kind of show him this Excel macro. And I go to Top Ops for work the day. Um, I come back at the end of the day and he had built a very basic prototype of what is now Balto. Oh, really? It wow. used Google Speech API to, in the moment, analyze what I was saying and then pop it into an algorithm that would uh, like pick out different categories of what this was happening in, in, in my speech. And he showed me this, and uh, I linked up with Chris and said, I think we have something. Yeah. So that's actually how it all got started. Time and then to build from a there, company, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did some business planning and made it happen. That's awesome. Well, so tell me, get, let's get a little more specific about how this works, right? Because I can imagine you know, if I'm a salesperson, I'm listening to it, sounds great, you know, but I'm starting to wonder, okay, so what happened? So I'm talking to somebody and like, is something talking to my ear? Am I seeing pop-ups on my screen? I mean, how is it, how is the program knowing when to tell me things? So tell me about the, the details a little. Sure. So first of all, how it's not happening mm -hmm. is there's nothing going in your ear. Okay. And the reason is that we actually saw uh, managers do this right now. It's called whisper mode. Okay. <laughs> and you have the sales rep who's on the phone and the manager. And uh, I was actually watching Chris coach someone on the phone. And 
um, you can hear the the customer talking, mm -hmm. and um, you know the Chris is coaching him through the call, and the customer gives an objection. The customer says, uh, "You know, honestly, I think this sounds really good, but uh, why don't you call me back in two or three weeks?" And Chris whispers in the phone. He goes, "Don't take that," and the sales rep gets nervous and goes, "I can't take that." Yeah, <laughs> and the, the person goes, "What?" What? Huh? And we realize that you know doing it through audio wouldn't really work because there's too much you have to balance. So the way that Balto actually works is it is converting um, all the audio to speech to text. Mm -hmm. So it's doing speech to text, uh, transcribing in real time everything the customer says and everything the sales rep says. Okay. Picking out the key moments in that text, and then on the sales rep's computer screen, it's this little narrow sidebar that's uh, riding along with the sales rep on the call, coaching them on the call, will only in the moments that it really makes a difference pop up recommendations. Hmm. So Balto is not something that's like scripted telling you every single thing to say we don't want you to sound like a robot sure we want you to have that tap on the shoulder that every sales rep needs when you're talking too much talking too fast not asking questions get stuck with an objection all the sort of stuff that sales reps are used to very interesting so for the people that are using this so far is it is it a hard transition or is it something where i could i could start using this you know day one and i would be comfortable with it what have, what have you seen there yeah there's there's kind of two pieces to it. Um, the harder transition is the organizational change. Okay. Right? Bet, yeah. Because you're a sales manager or a director or VP, and you've been designing your sales strategy for years. Mm -hmm. And now you sure. have to, in your sales strategy, say, wait a minute, every time we make a change to how our, our sales team should communicate with the outside world, instead of sending everyone an email, let's do it in Balto. Mm. But to actually get started, what's so cool about Balto is it's a software where there's only one button and you okay. don't even need to click it. Really? <laughs> it automatically starts up, automatically listens, hmm. and is uh, giving you recommendations live on the call. Super so easy. So you're using yeah. it whether you, you, know, you expect it to or not. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, so tell me about how you, you teach the AI, right? Because obviously you start from scratch and you got to teach this this piece of code, right. um, how to know when to, to mention something, what to say, all that kind of stuff. So you know, where does that data come from? Yeah, it's it ranges from very, very simple to very complex. Okay. The simplest that you can do is type in a word or phrase you want Balto to recommend or to understand, like okay. a keyword. Gotcha. So somebody says the word pricing, and maybe you type in the word pricing. So every time someone says the word pricing, it'll pop up your pricing chart or something that you're looking for. Then there's more complex, which is somebody saying, you know, I don't have any money for that right now, but why don't you call me back in two or three weeks? Okay. What we've done is compose over 140 different categories, which we uh, together call our AI library. Okay. And those are like the really common situations that happen on sales calls. Sure. So when you were in sales, like, what were some of the objections you got? Uh, you know, pricing, you know, product fit, yep. um, the timing, you know, you issues. Go. Yeah. So course. all of those are examples of things that are in our AI library. Really? Okay. So you could tomorrow have Balto up and you click the not a fit button mm -hmm. and Balto goes, got it. I'll now recognize thousands of different ways people could say your software is not a fit. Wow. Automatically. That's really cool. Yeah. And so you got to listen to a lot of calls to do that. Are, so are you automatically giving a recommendation or is it something where each company can kind of customize what the software recommends or how does that part work? The actual content is totally customized mm -hmm. um, because first of all, no one likes someone who's never seen their business to come in and tell them how to run their business. Of course. Yeah. Especially in sales where every product is unique, every person's unique and you have to make the pitch the voice of how your co your company likes to pitch. Mm -hmm. So we're not in the business of telling people what to say, but we do have recommendations about like best practices of questions that tend to be effective or different ways you can phrase your value prop. So we give people a template to make it really easy for them to fill in their content right away, but it's 100% customized with hmm. whatever the customers want to put in there. That's perfect, yeah. Well, so I want to ask you a question that's a little more internal to the business, more of yeah. an entrepreneurship question. Um, obviously, we have your whole team here today, which is really exciting. Yeah, good to see. And they all got really yeah, quiet, is. and they're all they're all listening to us now, which is great. So uh, you've grown quickly, you know, and I think this is a thing that a lot of uh, startups run into at some point, you know, if, if they're doing well. So how do you how do you handle that, right? So you go from hey, you know, we got something, we we start to find that product market fit, people are buying it, and right. now I got to go out and hire a bunch of people. 
Um, did you put processes in place? Did you kind of have to hire another key person to manage that for you? I mean, what's that looked like? Yeah. Um, the business is way more fun now than it's ever been, period. It's just, okay, yeah, enough, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a good problem to have. That is, yeah. Um, and it's the sort of problem that um, as long as you take each challenge one at a time mm -hmm. and you don't try to create a process now for something you think might happen a year from now, mm -hmm. as long as you're smart about each individual challenge, uh, you're going to build the infrastructure that you need to grow. And gotcha. uh, there's no possible way to be smart about every challenge unless you have a team that is wicked sharp and empowered to make smart decisions. So if the team feels like they can't like speak up and go do something meaningful, then you're not going to be able to adapt or grow quick enough. So mm -hmm. we have a saying at Balto that uh, the saying goes, think, do, debate. Gotcha. And what that means is everybody should feel free to take a couple minutes and think about any problem they want to think about. Hmm. And then go do it. Like put a solution in place. Uh, let's not engage in a debate where everyone's like theoretically guessing what might work and what not. Sure. Until we've actually done it, like at least a little bit. So uh, think, do, debate, we hope uh, encourages a bias toward action hmm. where everyone feels comfortable and confident making awesome things happen like we just had a uh, women in tech event that we sponsored this week, um, sponsored by a group we have internally uh, called the Ladies of Balto Software, okay. Labs for short. There you go. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I didn't go to the company and say, we need a labs group. Sure. <laughs> you know, it, it, it came up organically. And it came up because we have awesome people who aren't afraid to do awesome things. And that's, that's the sort of thing that can get created that way. Cool, well, that's yeah. great advice. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, well, I think there's there's two more questions that I think a lot of our viewers might have right now. And the first is gonna be, that sounds like a great place to work. So are you guys looking for more people? Are you still hiring or where, where are you at there? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, I would assume <laughs> so, right? Keep growing. Yes. So if somebody wants to work with you, uh, what kind of positions are open and how can they find out more? Yeah, um, I would say in short, every position's open. Okay. And I know that sounds a little crazy and then I'll get more specific, but uh, basically we look for super uh, thoughtful, driven and uh, caring, communicative people. Okay. And if you're thoughtful, driven, caring and communicative, then we're gonna find a place where you can do awesome things at Balto. Cool. That being said, uh, we're like actively seeking account executives to okay. help us, um, you know, increase sales. We got some pretty ambitious revenue targets. We're actively seeking customer success managers because uh, unless you take care of your customers, uh, why are you even starting a company? Of course. And then uh, we're looking for leaders in uh, engineering and uh, support in operations. Cool. And should they just find that on your website or where do they get in touch? Yeah, you can go to baltosoftware.com slash careers. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. Delivered and it right to the camera. I, I appreciate did. that. Yeah. And then obviously if somebody wants to buy the software, sign up for your service, the same website. Uh, Baltosoftware.com. Exactly. Yeah. Easy enough. And there's a billion places you can request a demo there. All right. Awesome. Well, we got a couple minutes left. So now we got to switch to the most important part of the show, which is learning about the bourbon, right? Yes. So we're going to bring Eric sure. on. Eric's the founder of the event here, and he's going to tell us what we're si sipping on and why. So we are sipping on IW Harp. And I was thinking about this a little bit, but you know, whether it's Balto or Tenacity, Connect Marketing, Bourbon Friday, all of these are names and brands, but unlike so many bourbon brands, IW Harper is not a real person's name. I mean, there might be an IW Harper in the world, but this Some isn't name named after an actual really? person. And so the story of this is a, a man named Isaac Wolf Bernheim came to America with $4 and a dream, and he started like working in the alcohol industry and eventually made enough money to bring his brother Bernard over. And so then they started this distillery. They started selling their bourbon and they hired some salespeople and, and one of the salespeople got to be so good that that bourbon started to be called Harper's bourbon. So rather than like fight it, he actually leaned into it, renamed the brand IW Harper. So it's a combination of Isaac Wolf and the salesman's name, Harper, which just goes to show you how powerful sales can be. I mean, in fact, sales so powerful actually changed the name of a brand. That's wow. Incredible. Yeah. 
Another good story, man. He's always they're always so good, Eric. Really appreciate that. I would love to talk to Mr. Harper. <laughs> Long day. <laughs> so. Well, so we got a minute or two left. We got some events coming up this week, or you bet. Um, so we're leading up into uh, Startup Week, but we do have a few things next week. We have the Design Downtown Open House over at West Annoying CRM. Mm. There's a midday and evening session. This is gonna be the De Design Downtown STL discussing their preliminary research about downtown. And then you can actually provide your input uh, about downtown's future. Then also on Tuesday, we have not just a marketing conference. This is Content is Dead uh, mm. at Dot .zac. It's not really about content marketing being completely done. It's just about how it's changed. Sure. Blog posts, not so much video, audio, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, we couple people we know, Matt Camp from Influence Co. Oh, yeah. and then Michael Johnson from Slam are going to be cool. presenting. Awesome. On Wednesday, we have the State of Women's Business, uh, St. Louis Metro at T Rex. This is a collaboration between between CEO Mom, Provider Pool, a Rose Virtual Assistant, and She Can, and they're going to be talking about women's business across several industries. I believe there's also a pitch competition going to be sponsored by Provider Pool. And then on Thursday, of course, we have Venture Cafe. You know, they're, they had their big Next at 4240 event. So there's not any highlights yet this week. I'm sure mm -hmm. they've been uh, crazy busy yeah. doing that. Then Friday, we're back here for another great Bourbon Friday. We have Samantha Lee from Creative Mornings, and we've talked a little bit about Creative Mornings mm -hmm. before. And this is that sort of they're picking one topic and having a speaker uh, talk about that topic. And she's just going to be talking about that. And she'll probably talk a little bit about her own business. She runs a design, interior design company, I believe. Cool. Then Friday, also after that, uh, we have our trans gal. I just bought my tickets today. Um, biggest part of the year, go out, support our trans. It's amazing. Thank you guys. We are. We're going to be there. Our trans company. So, so go and support our grants because they're amazing. And then on Saturday last week, we had In Motion Filmmaking Conference mm -hmm. on here. You can go check out, get more information from last week, but that's on that Saturday. And then a week out from that, just want to make the announcement officially, Bourbon Friday is the closing party for Startup Week. Yeah. Uh, we will have the entire space of Kovo's main hall to be throwing this party. Uh, we'll have food and uh, you can come and check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. It should yeah. be a lot of fun and, you know, we're chasing the good guests right now, so. Very cool. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Well, Eric, as always, thank you so much for the events and the great story about the bourbon this week. Appreciate it. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Great talking to you today. So thanks for being here and Appreciate bringing your it. entire company with you. That's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Can I give two shout outs? Yeah, two shout outs. Go ahead. Okay. Just two shout outs. First of all, obviously, team, thank you. <laughs> Seriously. Second, girlfriend, thank you for being so supportive. You've always been awesome. That's all I got. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Well, for those of you tuning in, we are going to wrap things up here. I do want to thank a couple organizations and people. Thank you to Kovo for hosting us here every single week for the event and the show. I want to thank uh, EQ for helping us stream the show and distributing it to everybody in your audience. And of course, thank you to Ian Brown behind the camera, running the show, taking pictures, making us look good in front of the camera. For those of you tuning in, please join us again. We are here every Friday at 430 at Kovo. We can't wait to see you next week on the Bourbon Friday Show. Hey, thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this episode. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. To stay up to date, follow us on social. We are at Bourbon Fridays on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. See you next time.